Let's examine the inclined plane again and ask if the mass is sliding down a frictionless ramp of height h and angle theta, and it starts from rest. We can ask two questions that relate back to our kinematic problems. We can ask how long until it reaches the bottom of the ramp and how fast will it be going. Let's consider each of these two questions in turn. So how long will it take to get down to the bottom of the ramp? We may remember that the equations of motion in, in one dimension are that the final x uh, dimension equals the initial x location times the initial velocity in the x direction times time plus one half times the acceleration in the x direction times t squared. Now, there are a lot of parameters in this expression and we have to start inserting what we know about the problem. If we're starting up at the origin, we can say that that, that parameter x sub zero is equal to zero. And if we're starting at rest, then the initial velocity in the x direction equals zero. So our final x location, which we called d in the diagram before, is equal to one half times a sub x times t squared. And we already know what a sub x is. It equals g sine theta. We solved that in the inclined plane problem previously. d by geometry is just the height of the ramp divided by sine theta because d is the hypotenuse of the triangle and h is the opposite side. So opposite over it, the hypotenuse is the sine theta. If I want, I can rearrange terms here and move everything over to one side of the exp expression except for t and take the square root. I get that t is 1 over sine theta times the square root of 2h over g. That looks like an awfully complicated expression, but again, it's helpful to think about some limiting cases. Notice that the time to, to fall from a certain height doesn't really depend on the object's mass. This is a lot like for the case of free fall when we would drop things from a certain height and we would see that the time to fall didn't depend on whether it's a feather or a hammer or a bowling ball. The mass just canceled out. The other thing is if we take some limiting cases like, for example, the case of theta is 90 degrees, that's a ramp that's going straight up, in other words, it's like a wall, then the sine of theta is 1, and the time to fall is the square root of 2h over g. Well, that's the same as we got when we did motion in one dimension, and we drop something from a certain height. We got that the, height of, the time to drop from a certain height in free fall is the square root of 2h over g. So that actually checks nicely. The other extreme is if we put theta is equal to zero degrees, well then the sine of theta is zero and this denominator goes very, very small. And if we're dividing by that thing, then time goes to infinity and the object never slides down the ramp. And that makes sense because if I stick an object on a flat table, I don't expect it to move. I don't expect it to get to a, a certain distance of d away because I imagine when it starts at rest, it just stays at rest. The second question we posed is how fast will it be going when it gets to the bottom of the ramp? We may remember that the velocity exp expression in one dimension is the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction plus acceleration in the x direction times time. Again, we have a lot of parameters here, so we want to set, start setting things equal to anything we know. We know that the initial velocity in the x direction is zero, and so our solution is that the final velocity is the x, x component of acceleration, which we previously decided is g sine theta times time. And we need to put in the time for this thing to reach the bottom of the ramp, but we just calculated that. That was very convenient. So when we insert for time, the time is one over sine theta times square root of two h over g. Now notice that the sine in the numerator cancels the sine in the denominator, and the g that's over here, I can bring inside the square root sign, in which case it becomes a g squared, and I have 2h g squared divided by g, or I have that the final velocity is just the square root of 2gh. This should look very familiar when we think about uh, an object falling from a, a certain height up in the air, and I just let it go of it then it, its velocity when it reaches the ground 
is just square root of 2 gh. So there's an interesting parallel here to the incline plane. Notice again, like free fall, this velocity at the end of the ramp is independent of mass, just like free fall. And it doesn't really depend on the horizontal distance of the ramp. It just depends on the vertical height of the, of the ramp. And this is again like uh, in projectile motion problems. The velocity in the y direction and the vertical direction when we did projectile motion didn't really depend on what was happening in the horizontal because those two directions, the motion is completely uh, un unrelated or uncoupled. So it just matters uh, when, the, when an object strikes the ground it depends on how high it's coming from, and that's what we find here with the inclined plane as well.